ever feel like, you know, like turning a challenge into something, something amazing, yeah. something truly amazing. Well, today's deep dive, it's all about that. We're going to be exploring um, Climb the Peak for MS. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, it's pretty great. So we've got Sarah Locke's story and uh, how she turned, well, her multiple sclerosis diagnosis into, you know, this really inspiring event for her community. Mm. And honestly, there are some real, like, tangible lessons here in resilience yeah for all of us i think yeah absolutely and what i find so fascinating about this whole thing is how like a personal story you know it can spark a movement like sarah's journey it's like this powerful reminder that sometimes our toughest moments they can ignite this fire you know and it spreads warmth and hope to others it's pretty amazing okay so let's let's dive into this so in 2019 sarah received you know a life-changing diagnosis right mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis now i don't know about you but uh I think if I were in her shoes, I'd probably, I'd probably feel like such a mix of fear and uncertainty about the future. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a completely natural reaction to a diagnosis like that. The uncertainty alone can be, I mean, it's daunting. Right. Totally. But here's what, like, here's where Sarah's story, it takes this, like this really unexpected turn because instead of, instead of letting MS define her, she decides, get this, to climb a mountain. Wow. Literally Mount Washington, <laughs> the highest peak in the Northeast. And this was like. It was a long held dream of hers, but this time, you know, it became something more. Imagine that, like turning your response to a diagnosis like that into an act of like incredible courage and yeah. then and then turning it into a force for good at the same time. It's powerful. It's such a powerful example of like reclaiming control, you know, and, and not just climbing for herself, but using this this challenge, this massive challenge to raise awareness and funds too for the National MS Society. And get this, that single act it raised an incredible $10,000. $10,000. Talk about turning a personal challenge into something extraordinary, right? Like, it makes you wonder, you know, what sparked that fire in her, that drive to not just live with MS, but to, like, to fight back. And fight back she did. But, and this is key, not alone, this is actually where the seed for, get this, climb the peak for MS was planted. Mm -hmm. Because Sarah realized that she could use her experience, her very personal experience, to build something, you know, something bigger. Something that could, that could bring people together and make a real impact. Wow. So we go from a personal climb to a community event. And it, it makes me think about, like, the power of shared experiences, yeah. you know, how how powerful is that? But turning that vision, that initial spark into a reality, I mean, that takes more than just an idea, right? Oh, absolutely. It takes dedication and planning yeah. and a whole lot of heart. And that's exactly what we see in Sarah's story. Like, as she embarks on, on creating Climb the Peak for MS, she wasn't, like, just organizing an event, right? Okay. She was building a movement. So we've got this, like vision taking shape right an annual event bringing people together to you know to fight ms to climb but and i'm sure you know this as anyone who's ever organized like anything knows turning that spark yeah. that initial spark of an idea into this like this roaring bonfire that takes work like serious work oh it's so true and the details in in, in these sources that we've got i mean they paint this picture of sarah's like dedication yeah. because she wasn't just like booking a space and hoping for the best this was this was next level yeah. designing the logo securing sponsorships like she poured her heart into every single detail of climb the peak for ms like i don't know you can practically like feel the energy she was pouring into this right yeah. like i can almost picture her like sketching out logo ideas and brainstorming and like reaching out to to local businesses and this is this is where like her community building genius it really it shines because it wasn't just you know mass emails or like these generic sponsorship requests no she went like way above, approached her neurologist's office, you know, local businesses. She even reached out to the MS wellness program, like personally connecting with each one. See, that's what I'm talking about. That personal touch that makes like all the difference in the world. You can tell, right? You can tell when someone truly believes in, in what they're doing huh. and it, it becomes like contagious. Totally. And it and it paid off big time because that first climb the peak for MS, it was in May 2023 at Pat's Peak Ski Area. And the sources describe it as like pure joy, you know, like yeah. music, laughter, this palpable like sense of community. Oh, I bet. I bet the energy was like electric. Yeah. But knowing like knowing Sarah's thoughtfulness, I'm guessing it wasn't like I wasn't just about the climb itself. You are, you're spot on because yeah. she designed the event to be inclusive from the get go because not everyone can, you know, climb a mountain, especially, especially those who are like facing mobility challenges, right? So she created options. So there was a climb to, to the summit and then there was a halfway point. And then there was even just like 
enjoying the accessible base trail. That's amazing. I love that. Like yeah. it really was about about coming together and showing support, raising awareness, you know, yeah. in whatever way worked for each person. It wasn't just about physical strength, yeah. it was about it was about the strength of a community, a community coming together. Yes. Precisely. And all of that, the passion, the planning, that community spirited it, it translated into something, something truly remarkable. Because that first Climb the Peak for MS, it raised a phenomenal $16,000. Wow, $16,000. That's that's incredible. But I imagine, like, the impact, it went, it went way beyond just, like, the money raised. Oh, absolutely. Because it provided this sense of hope. Right. This sense of not being alone in, like, in facing this challenging diagnosis. And that, mm. you know, that sense of belonging, that sense of, of shared purpose, that's priceless. Totally. So we've seen Sarah's just incredible drive. Yeah. And the effort that transformed, you know, this idea into a tangible event yeah. and this amazing response from the community. But there's still there's still this question in my mind, like, what was it about about her MS diagnosis specifically that fueled this fire in her? You know, that's that's a question worth like really diving into because it gets to the heart of of Sarah's motivation and it, it reveals something that honestly, I think we can all learn from. It's like. I don't know. You'd kind of expect, I guess, someone to maybe like <laughs> retreat inward after a diagnosis like that, you know, Right. focus on like treatment and, and, you know, just adjusting to a new normal. But Sarah, Sarah took that. And I don't even know. It's like she took that energy and turned it outward, almost like, like a beacon, you know, Yeah. for other people. It is. That's what's so, so inspiring about this whole thing is like she could have, I mean, easily right directed all of her energy, all of her focus towards her own journey. Of course, yeah. Which would be like completely understandable, but she didn't. Instead, she chose to to create something that would that would benefit everyone, you know, everyone facing facing this disease, and that's just remarkable. Totally. So, this like this burning desire, this fire in her to like to fight back, yeah. was it just about like finding a cure or was there something something more like personal driving her it was it was multifaceted it was yeah. it was deep yeah like first you've got that absolute refusal to to be defined by the diagnosis sarah talks about it as like this this fire within her this this need to to challenge the the limitations that that, that ms seemed to to impose you know it makes me think about how how we talk about resilience right mm. in the face of adversity but sarah's story it's like it takes it takes that whole idea a step further because it's not it's not yeah. just about like bouncing back you know yeah it's about using that that momentum that initial like energy to propel yourself and others forward yes precisely and that's that's where the the power of community right that's where that comes in yeah. because climbing mount washington solo that showed her what she was what she was capable of but it was it was the outpouring of support from from other people that that sparked this idea of something of something bigger she wanted to she wanted to recreate that feeling yeah. you know of shared struggle and shared triumph too because yeah. she knows she knows how how isolating a diagnosis like ms it can be yeah because sometimes honestly sometimes just knowing you're not alone that's like half the battle yeah. it's like it's like this this collective strength yeah that lifts everyone up absolutely and and sarah's story itself like just her being so open that became a source of hope for for so many people it was amazing by by sharing her experience and sharing it so openly she gave she gave a human face to ms you know what i mean it challenged it challenged preconceived notions and it it fostered like this deeper understanding of of what it actually means to live with this disease. I get it. It's one thing to to read, you know, statistics and medical definitions, right. but it's a whole other ball game. I think when you when you connect with like someone's lived experience, yeah. I mean, it makes it it makes it real. It makes mm. it it makes it relatable. Exactly. And as Sarah's as Sarah's own MS, you know, as, as it progressed, her commitment to to accessibility it grew too. Oh. Which makes sense, right? Because she she understood firsthand that not everyone not everyone experiences the world, you know, in the same way. And she was determined. She was so determined to make to make climb the peak for MS welcoming to like to everyone, regardless of, of their physical abilities. And that's and that's reflected in every every aspect of the event. Right. I mean, the different climbing options, the ex accessible trails. That's about it's about making sure everyone everyone feels like empowered. You know, mm -hmm. to, to to participate, to contribute, to yeah. be to be a part of something something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, a hundred percent. And and that brings us to to the second annual Climb the Peak for MS. This was held June 9th, twenty twenty four. Now imagine this, okay? You've you've poured your heart and soul right into creating this incredible event. The first year, 
It was a roaring success. I mean, people loved it. Everything is set. Everything is ready to go for, for round two. And then the skies open up. Oh no. Are you talking about <laughs> are you talking about that massive that massive downpour? Talk about oh my gosh. Talk about a test of resilience. I know. It was it was torrential rain. I mean it threatened to like completely derail this whole oh, thing. No. I know. But Sarah and, and her team, they were not about to let a little or or a lot, let's be honest, of water dampen their uh, dampen their spirits. They love that. Tents, tents were erected, activities, they got moved indoors, and through it all, like that same infectious energy and that sense of community, it, it just shone through. That's amazing. I love that. It's like even Mother Nature, right? Even Mother Nature couldn't stop this thing. They adapted, they yeah. persevered, which I guess speaks to like the core message of the event itself. Right? 100%. Yes. And there was this, this particularly like touching moment that day. Sarah's parents, who have like been her rocks, right? Probably. Since since her diagnosis, they surprised her by driving. Get this, four hours, four hours through this this downpour to to be there. Oh, wow! I know it was a testament to like the power of love and and support and how it can like how it can fuel even even the most like challenging difficult endeavors. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna lie that that almost brought a tear to my eye. Like, yeah, that's that's really special. But so despite like despite the weather. The event was was a success. A resounding success. <laughs> remember that remember that sixteen thousand dollars, right? From the first year? Yeah. They like they blew that number like completely out of the water in year two. Oh, yeah. They raised over twenty nine thousand dollars. Wow. They like more than doubled it. I know. That's incredible. That's I mean, now that's that's inspiring. It really it really is. And and mark your calendars, by the way, because the third annual climb the peak for MS, it's it's already in the works. Oh, you know, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Sarah's story is it's just this powerful reminder that even amidst amidst our own personal challenges, right? Yeah. We can all like we can all find ways to to make a difference. A hundred percent. I love that. So as you go about your day, you know, think about this. What's what's a cause that that you're like really passionate about? What like what small step could you take today? Today. To support that cause or or inspire like inspire someone else. You never know, right? You just you never know the, the ripple effect it, it might create. Now there's a thought to to carry with you. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep keep diving deep.